Good morning and welcome to Leatherwood. Here's what you need to know. If you're a first time guest or a recent guest, we hope you felt welcome as you entered in today. Guests, we have one request of you and that is as you leave, if you wouldn't mind going by our welcome center, filling out a guest card and exchanging that for a gift from us. Here at Leatherwood, we believe that small groups are the strength of our church. So if you're not currently going to a small group, there's a few ways you can find one. You can either go out to our lobby, there's a board on the wall, to the Welcome Center, or to our website, leatherwood.church. Pick a class, make a plan, and join us for our next scheduled gathering. Here at our church, we have an awesome opportunity called Discover Class. This is a new member slash prospective members class that meets for one session with the staff. We provide lunch and answer any questions that you have about our church. So if you're not sure what your next step is, it's probably that class. How do you get in it? You just see one of the staff and say, I want to be in that next Discover Leatherwood class, and we will make sure that that happens. Here at our church, we have many easy ways to give, so please pick the way that's best for you. You can give online at our website, easytide.com backslash LBCAL. You can give in the plates as you leave today, mail it in, or drop it by the church. And thank you, church, for a great start this year in your generosity. On Wednesday nights, we have what we call family nights. Wednesday nights at 6.30, we have something for all ages, and we would love to invite you back to join us this week. Once again, guests, we know that you have options, and we don't take it lightly that you've chosen to worship with us today. So please don't forget to fill out that guest card. God bless you, and we cannot wait to see you next week.
full. <laughs> he is so great. Continue to worship with us this morning. Evidence. See the evidence all around, amen? If you look, right? Sometimes we get caught not looking, right? We get, we get caught in our own little world, and we miss all of God's blessings, don't we? Happens a lot, and we need to slow down a little bit, right? Let's sing to them. All throughout my history, Your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms may wait for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness. All all of my life And I see your promises and fulfillment All of my life All of my life Help me remember when I'm weak Fear may come to fear See you. 
Father, Lord, we just thank you. We love you. We just thank you for just allowing us to come and worship you this morning. Lord, you be honored and glorified in everything we do today and throughout this week, Lord. We just thank you and praise you for loving us. Lord, we just love you, Lord. Thank you for all you do for this church, Lord, and just continue to work through us. Lord. These things I ask in your name. Amen. You may be seated. is to be heard what you would say a word of God's feet let it pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to see and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak i'm finding myself in the midst of you beyond the music beyond the noise and all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet I hear your voice Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay in your holiness, word of God, speak. Let it pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay. In your holiness I'm finding myself At a loss for words 
And the funny thing is, it's okay. Thank you, church, for allowing a freedom to worship our a church that's responsive. Preacher talk is uh, your good church to preach in. Uh, there's a connection. Some of you are praying, Lord, help him. He needs help. <laughs> Some of you are praying that, uh, that we'll, we'll heed and hear and obey God's word as we preach. I need that prayer. I always do. And I thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's exciting to stand in this pulpit and preach. I am, at the same time, I'm praying for your pastor search committee as they have this job before them to find God's man. And uh, I know that they are working hard and, and will continue to do that. It's, that's not an easy job, but it is a wonderful opportunity to bring in God's person that he already knows who it is. And we got to discover that and, and get him on board. But until then, as uh, my wife says, you stuck with me. <laughs> and so here, here we are, and uh, we're going to continue to preach. I want you to turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to preach a topical message this morning. I don't do that a lot, but I'm going to be all over the road map. And uh, just buckle your seat belts and hang in here. We'll try to, try to keep you abreast of Scripture movement and everything else this morning. I kind of always work hard on a title for a message, and this one just, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it was coming to me not too good or why, but I titled it, Church Attendance is More Than Checking the Boxes. But let me explain what I'm talking about. Y'all remember, some of you old Baptists will remember, we used to come to church, we used to have those little small white envelopes, uh, and it would say, have you read your Bible, Bible study, uh, Sunday school, uh, uh giving, participating, you check those little boxes on there. And boy, if you could get 100%, that's awesome, wasn't it? And we, we did that. Somehow or another, those envelopes got lost in the shuttle. We, we've got a big, pretty pink one, because we're told that people give more in a pink envelope. I don't, I don't know who, who studied that, but anyway, uh, we, got, we got our Annie Armstrong offering envelope, and this is week of prayer, and uh, we want you to be faithful in giving to that for North American Missions. It's, a, it's one of our pure offerings. All that money goes to where it needs to go. It's not eat up in administrative costs or anything else. And then many of you are participating in Continue the Vision, and you've been very faithful in that, and I encourage you to continue with those things as God leads and directs. But you can check all those boxes that you want to. There's more to it than that. And so we want to see what God, how he speaks to us this morning. If you are able and can, would you stand with me as we look at Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us not, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves um, together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Thank you. Be seated. I believe this morning that you're where you're supposed to be. I believe that if you're a part of a New Testament church, and that New Testament church has its doors open. You are supposed to be there. 
unless you're sick or providentially hindered or something of that nature. And I'm glad you're here this morning. I, I am particularly happy to see you. I'm trying to get around and shaking hands and y'all still introducing me. Continue to do that. Give me your name because it seems to go in one ear and out the other. And I'm not, uh, not retaining things like I used to. And my wife isn't here to tell me who that person is. <laughs> and uh, she, she's the one I used to write on. I said, who was that? And now she's like me. She said, I don't know. <laughs> but we're, we're making this journey together. <laughs> we're in our What If series. And I challenged you last week to pray, 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 pray. What if everybody prayed? What if I hope that you have had a wonderful week of prayer and God's blessed you. You've just had a little revival in your prayer corner. And, uh, and that's a wonderful time. And, and I believe you have, I believe you're a praying church. And we cannot be what God wants us to be unless we are a praying church. And I continue to, to encourage you there. Now, the challenge I'm going to give you this morning for next Sunday is um, what if everybody came to Bible study? What if everybody studied the Word during the week? Well, if you're praying and you're in God's Word, I'm telling you right now, God's going to bless you. And your eyes are going to be open. You're going to see God do wonderful things because you're dependent upon him for him to do those things. Um, you know, we have wonderful small group Bible study teachers in this church, people that love you and care and study hard and work and prepare to present a godly Sunday school lesson that we have this each and every week. I think that church grow, growth is through our small groups. I think that's a wonderful thing. And, and so we, you know, we're like any other church. We count nickels and noses and, and uh, try to find out who's here and who's not. And some of you through COVID uh, are just now coming back. And God bless you for being here today. And I just encourage you, church attendance is more than checking the boxes. We have a call to assemble together, to minister together, to study the word together, to obey the word together. And, and so I would tell you, first of all, there is a call to believe. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17, the Bible says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them, that from childhood you may have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, our call is to believe and to believe God's word, but you can't believe God's word if you don't know God's word. You need to be in study, and, and people tell me, well, I, I, don't, it's just, I had to do that in school, and I didn't like it. Well, you know what I learned in school? I didn't much like it either. I didn't enjoy that. I wished I'd applied myself more. When I went to college and got in Bible college, I, I had a, an interest in the subject matter. I made much better grades, and those things come to me, but I wished I had applied myself more. One of the things I learned in first, uh, I think I crammed uh, um, in a four-year degree. It took me about six or seven years, but you know what? I I hung in there <laughs> and got it. And, uh, and, and, but you know what I learned most of all? I can't remember a lot of things. I learned how to study. I learned how to go and research and, and challenge myself in the Word of God. And can could I, could I tell you, you have things at your fingertips I didn't have when I was a college student. You can call on Google and say, Google, I'm in uh, Hebrews 10, 25. Give me the commentary on that. And it'll pull up all kind of commentaries and definitions and meanings as to that scripture. Now, you got to be careful who's teaching what is going on, but for the most part, you have great things at your, at your disposal. And you can continue studying God's word. Uh, folks, I'm just telling you, and, and we have great teachers here, but if all you get is a 45-minute study in the scriptures each week, you're going to starve to death spiritually. Yeah. You need to be in God's word and study God's word and, and, uh, and let him speak to you day in and day out because it's a wonderful picture. The Bible is, 
inspired of God. It is, um, there is no mistake in God's word. Uh, there is, the, you know, we've, we've got to believe this book in its entirety. Now, we can sometimes debate what certain verses mean, and we may both be wrong in those things. But I'm going to tell you, there's enough that I understand that I'm not doing right. God's still working on me. Is he working on you? And, and so we're in this ministry here as God begins to do a work in our lives. And we're called on to believe. I believe a lot of things. I believe a lot of stupid things. I, I believe that if we get out on time, I can get to a restaurant and get me some fried chicken. <laughs> you know, I, I believe in that or I wouldn't go in that direction. Let's believe God's word and fill our souls up. Let's feast on it. The Bible said, taste and see. His word is good. And we need to do that in our lives. You see, learning God's word gives assurance. If we're called on to study to show ourselves approved, uh, we need to do that that we might have that special assurance. All scripture given by inspiration of God. Inspired of God, we have that belief before us. And as we believe it, it makes us ready to serve. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, I watch people on TV and do these commercials, and it'll be a famous person, an actor, and they, they, <laughs> they're advertising everything from cold medicine, hemorrhoid medicine, whatever, and I'm thinking, I wonder if y'all really use the product you're endorsing. And, uh, and we watch that stuff from time to time. When the world sees us and we're inviting people to come to church, you know what they're asking themselves? I wonder if that person really believes in what he's asking me to do. I wonder if that church member from uh, Leatherwood Baptist Church is dedicated enough to do what he's asking me to do, to pray, to study God's word, and to walk in those areas. And so we, are, we have a call in, the, in our life as we assemble together to believe together. Now... Folks, it's, it's a beautiful picture here when the church comes together. And by the way, this building isn't the church. It is the place we've dedicated to come where we can come and assemble together in one beautiful place to worship the Lord. You are the church. The, the saved, the called out, the, you, you are God's church here today. And we are called on to believe this message ever before us. We're called on to study. It never was my favorite thing. I couldn't understand why I couldn't just kind of listen to everybody and get a grade and go home. <laughs> they were always giving tests. My brother had almost a photographic memory. He could read something. His comprehension level was just out the roof. He must have got all of my comprehension gifts because <laughs> I got to read it over and over and over again and and if a butterfly flies by while I'm reading it, I'm lost all over. i got to start, start there, oh, look, a butterfly. And I'm like, boom, I'm gone. And so it, 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 it kind of comes to me, it's very hard work. We've got to be diligent in the study. And that's why he says in, in uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, to study to show ourselves approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, Folks, that's kind of an intimidating verse when you look at it because it is asking us to be well-equipped, that we can give an account, we can answer what we need to. Now, it doesn't mean you've got to know everything about God's Word. Be honest about it. You know, some answers are okay to say, I don't know. But on the other side, we know enough. You better know enough how to win somebody to Jesus because you got there some way yourself. <laughs> you know, you may not have the Romans road of salvation, the five points, or you may not can do faith or grow or, or EE and that kind of thing. All those are good programs, but somewhere down the road, if you got saved, you ought to be able to tell somebody else how you come to know Jesus. Yeah. And, and so we need to be ready for that. And the better studied in Scripture we are, the better equipped to do that ministry. We study it to store up that we might not sin. And in Psalms, 119.11, the Bible says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. <laughs> I got enough junk in my head. Y'all have some of that? You ever have useless facts and things that's in your head? You take those pictures in your mind, and I tell young folks, 
Don't look at the wrong stuff. Don't go at the wrong places because your brain will make a permanent picture. And the devil knows just when to prod you to bring those memories up. You're here trying to serve the Lord and all of a sudden there goes one of those bad, sinful memories. Folks, we need to crowd that out. And how you do it is you crowd it out with the Word of God. You fill yourselves full of the Word of God and that you might not sin against Him. We study it because it is a light to our way. Again, in Psalms 119, in verse 105, the Bible said, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. <laughs> we, we, got, we, we stepped up about a year ago and bought one of those beds that raises up. It's got more buttons on this remote control than I know how to mash. And so last night, when I come to bed, my wife had the head up a little too high for me. And I can't see anyway, and in the dark, I'm trying to match that thing, and I hit the vibrating button. <laughs> and, and it was going, and, and uh, there's a dog that sleeps at the foot of the bed on Mary Alice's side, and that dog jumped up and had a fit. Woke my wife up, and I, can't, I had to cut the lights on, get up and look at that thing to figure it out. And the one button I failed to get was it has a light under the bed. And I get back in the bed, and I lay there, and I'm thinking, something right in this room. There's a hue of light going on here. I mean, I'm thinking, hmm, what's going on? Am I in heaven? I mean, you know, I'm, like, I'm laying there and I'm thinking. So now I got to get up and look where the flashlight thing is on this uh, button. I'm, I'm going to have to disable some of those. I don't need them, but uh, I need light. I need all I can get. I need light from the Lord. I need him to light my path to guide my ways. It's funny, kind of the older we get, the more light we need to read. I remember when I was young, I could just read stuff in the dark and some small print, and I write real small. When I write my sermons, a lot of times my handwriting is so small that I hadn't changed, but my eyes have. And what I've learned now, I got to get them typed in a bigger font, and so my wife will take my hieroglyphics and, and my small print, and she will blow it up and where I can see, or else you'd be here forever. I'd be trying to find what I was trying to say to y'all. I need light, but I need spiritual light. We live in a dark world. We, we live in a world that's, that's wicked and vile, and, 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 and without the light of God, we're going to go down the wrong path. We, we need to be led of the Lord, and as we come to assemble ourselves together, we're fellowshipping together, we're feasting on the Word of God, we're learning what God wants us to know, and he is lighting our path. We study it because it's alive and relevant for today. In Hebrews 4.12, the Bible says, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of our soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <laughs> God's word is powerful, folks. We, we need his precious word in our lives. And we also study it because it gives us food for life. In Luke 4 and 4, Jesus answered him saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I used to have a professor in Bible college and he'd look over at us and, and bend over his podium and he said, too many of you boys are living on grease instead of grace. And he'd always look right at me. I didn't understand that. There's a lot of things out here, and we need to make sure that, that we are living by the Lord. We're feasting on his word and not the junk food of life. The devil wants you to feast on that junk food. He'll make it look good. He'll brighten it up. He'll make it tempting, or you wouldn't go that way. You need the word of God to be able to discern if that's good or bad. You need the word of God to know that you're not blown around by every wind of doctrine. You need the word of God to teach you to walk a straight and narrow way in God's path and stay on it because the Lord said his way is straight and narrow and few be that find and follow it. But broad is the path that leads to destruction and many will follow that road. Truth is, is that Christianity is and will always be in a small minority around society. And in America, and when you knock on doors, we used to do that cold calling, and I think we still need to do it as we can. But people always tell you, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. They associate that with being 
in America. <laughs> Where you go to church? Uh, I go down there to Leatherwood. Who's the pastor? <clears throat> if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. I get those answers. I know the diagnostic questions to ask to find out. I can nail you if you're not in the church. But I don't do it to humiliate you. I do it that we can get to the truth. That we can find out why we need to be involving ourselves, assembling together. Why we need to be studying God's word. We need that diet in our life. Well, we've looked this morning at a couple of things already. A call to believe, a call to study. Then there's a call to share. To share. A call to be doers of the word. And James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We need to be hands-on missionaries. What's that mean? It means you and I better get involved. We need to be involved in the work of the Lord, the way of God, in direction. This church has many ministries that reach out from senior adults to uh, our mission involvements from uh, out west and ministering to the Indian to, to um, our giving through Annie Armstrong and, and our convention to help North American missionaries. And a lot of, many of you do independent things that you go and minister in some of the foreign countries. And I got friends that just got back from a wonderful trip in Africa and and we, we look around and we see these things. The call for you and I is to minister right here, around our area, and to the uttermost parts of the world. People need Jesus. It's not this or that. It's both and. And we need to be involved in that. And folks, unless we're in God's word, fellowshipping in a church, it's amazing to me we can go halfway across the world, but we won't even support our own church. I got a problem with that, folks. I'll just tell you. Uh, you. You're not involved in your church and Bible study and the things that's going on around us. Don't be signing up to go in foreign mission field. If you're not willing to love people here and tell them about Jesus. Now, you may get much better results in a foreign land that's, that's open and hungry and it's not, I believe, that so much stymied around America today. We're so gospel-hardened in the south and everything else, it's, it's hard to crack those nuts. But I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit can move and minister in people's hearts and lives. I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue to go and to preach and to tell and to talk to people's lives because they need Jesus. I need to do it. I need to be sharing. A call to proclaim the gospel to the whole world. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, the Bible said, He said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel. To every creature, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Whew. That's our call right there. Kind of wraps it up in a nutshell, doesn't it? We're called to go. I can't go. I probably never will be taking another foreign mission trip, but I can pray for those of you that do go. I can give my dollars and cents to help you go. I can encourage those and recruit those and be a part of it. I can be a part of that missionary trip, even though I'm not the one going. You see, God needs us all in his plan, and we need to be involved in that through our local church. One of the mission trips we have this morning is to come to Leatherwood Baptist Church. That was your journey today. You got up, and you got ready, and you come on out, and here you are. Many of you were involved in Bible study. If you're not, let me encourage you to be involved in Bible study. You're going to get encouragement about that. I'm going to encourage you to bring people. Our what-if list is ever before us, and we're called on to do these things. Just what if we all prayed? What if we all studied God's Word? What if we all invited people to be a part of church? What if we all were involved in stewardship of tithing and giving over and above? What if those things were in our lives and how, how could God use us? What if we all loved people even though they were people that were not kind to us? <laughs> I was getting a test done this past week over in Gadsden doing a sonogram on me. I don't think I'm expecting, but anyway, they were looking all over <laughs> and uh, I was checking my kidneys out. And I had to wear that mask. Well, I had that mask on. She's had me to hold my breath. 
See the see the click 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 click. I'm going. Breathe. <laughs> I didn't know how bad out of shape I was, and I got hot, and I pulled that mask down a little bit. And she got all over me. She said, "Sir, sir, sir, you gotta have that mask over your nose." I'm thinking, me and you in here. And my mean side wanted to really get ugly about that. And, I said, and the Lord said, keep your mouth shut and put that mask on. It ain't going to be much longer. I did. She was very nice. And I didn't act a fool. I didn't have to tell her I was acting ugly. But by the way, I'm a Baptist preacher. <laughs> you might ought to know that too. You see, it is important for us to proclaim this, this gospel to the world. They need to hear it. We we'll also have a call on us to not be ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, the power of God for salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. <laughs> Paul used that verse of scripture over in Romans, and there's three I am's that he uses. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to go, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And then I usually move over a few books, and I talk about I am now ready to be offered. My time of departure is at hand. And I look at that, and I realize that all that involves us standing up for our, what we believe in. If you can be watered down with this and cowed down to where you are denying the Lord, God help you that we would be willing to stand even when we're persecuted for our belief. You know, people are dying for Jesus today in this world. There are martyrs that, that are they're being killed because of their faith in Jesus. Folks, it's not that hard for us in America to stand up for the Lord. Would you stand up for him? Would you do that and not be ashamed of him? We also have a call to know who the word is. Do you know who the word is? Over there in the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you skip on down to about the 14th verse, you'll read who the Word is. It said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our source of strength. He's our hope. As we begin to study the written Word, because of the living word, we are encouraged to be obedient to the word. Folks, there's a lot here. I'm just, just scratching the surface this morning in these kind of things. But I, I want you to know there's a call to share in our lives. They're, they're, these calls are important for us. There's a call to believe and a call to study. And all this is important. Why, why study God's word? Does it make any difference? How much time do you spend in God's Word against, uh, say, Facebook? How much time do you spend in God's Word against television or other things in life? And, 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 and so we, we got things sometimes way out of line. And I believe there ought to be a time that we read God's Word. My son puts a scripture out every morning on, on line, and I, I try to be the first one to like it. And sometimes I can't meet it. He's usually out about 5 or 5.30. And I put it out there. And I, that's, that's kind of where my day starts in that. But I need more than that one little verse of Scripture. I need to understand it, study it, break it down. What, what is God teaching me here? You say, well, Brother Randy, I'm not a theologian. I'm not a Bible scholar. That's okay. God knows who you are and loves you. And he will feed you his precious word. You just stay in it. You stay with it. You don't turn your back on it. You don't become, that it becomes secondary in your life. Get that book out and open it up and study. Hey, I got a novel idea. Why don't you come to Bible study and study with others? You can ask the question. Your teacher knows all the answers. <laughs> your teacher can say, just like me, I'm not sure I understand that either. Let's pray over it. Let's get ourselves together. You know what happens every now and then? God just opens a light to you. And he begins to give us the responsibility of knowing what that verse is teaching us. We come together. You never go wrong doing what's right. Studying God's word. We study his word. Why come to church? Because God tells us to study. 
It's God's roadmap for our journey in this life. I'm old fashioned. I've got the GPS on my phone. Uh, one of our cars has that roadmap thingy. You know what I like? I like an atlas. I still like, because I like to see how far it is from here to here and what cities I'm going to go through. And, and it's just much easier for me to get, get an atlas out and uh, to look and see. The Bible is my atlas to know where I need to be going. The Bible is my instruction book. You know, it's a, it's a love letter to his children. But it's also, a, it has some warnings in it that we're not to go and be a part of. In fact, it tells us how to live. The Ten Commandments are there and repeated in the New Testament as well. We, we have these things as God guides us and directs us. We see some of God's people that loved him dearly, how they sinned and yet came back to the Lord. We understand that God loves us and he says, he, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We study to stand against the devil and for the Lord. We study to know doctrine and truth so we won't be blown around by every wind of doctrine. There's always somebody out there trying to trip you up and get you to doubt. We need to be in a fellowship of believers. We need to be with his church to encourage each other. I need you and you need me. We need each other. And we're going to meet around Jesus. Amen? Everything we do is around Jesus and we're going to assemble Today, to study his word, to study more about him, to pray that he would speak to our hearts and help us to walk in his statutes and live for him. Are you willing to do that today? <laughs> Why? Why come to church? Why be a part of those things in life? You see, church attendance is more than checking a box. There's a lot more to it. We are a family. And here we are today. Guess what? Families fuss and squabble among themselves. We may disagree. But we're going to agree enough to get in this altar and pray and seek the face of God. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Lord, thank you for showing up, for being here today. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for allowing us to feast upon you and, and to be fed from you. Give us strength and wisdom as we serve you. Lord, I pray we'd be obedient in this time of invitation in your church. Lord, you may be calling people to say, this is where I want to plant my life and serve Leatherwood Baptist Church. Lord, there may be people here today that's, that's come to know you, but they've never followed in believer's baptism. Lord, I realize that you may be speaking to someone here today that is ready to accept you as Lord and Savior. They just need to come and pray and confirm all of that. Lord, you may be calling on us to come and intercede for others. Again, use this precious time in, in our altar area. Lord, we just need to be obedient to you is our prayer. In the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? God speaks. You come. Yeah. 